All right, we're going to go over to the UDK now with this file. First thing I'm going to do is click and delete all my high res stuff. So, okay, so any high res data I want out of this file. Okay, I just want my cement block, the low poly variation. It must have the texture assigned to it. Okay, it also must have um, all its relative paths correct. So here I got TGA. Now that's not really important actually, but I liked having it done. And then go export FBX. We're just got this damage cube FBX. Uh, I could put this Z up if I wanted to. Wait a minute, or is it Y up? I can't remember. Hmm. I think it's Z up. We're just going to keep it the way it is. Yep. And go all the way through here. Actually, it is Z up. It is Y forward. There we go. Try that. If I'm wrong, you can't persecute me. All right, so let's go into UDK. I'm just going to launch the latest build. Since I've been developing with TGAs and everything else, there's nothing else to do. There's just you just export the FBX and you should be importing it right in. That shouldn't be a complex workflow. If it is, then you have to rethink your workflow a little bit. All the hard stuff should be in development. All the easy stuff should be just placing it within the engine and just moving it around. I always kind of think I have to build this. I have to build these things for a person that maybe doesn't model. That's kind of how I think. So import. Even though that's probably the furthest thing from reality, but if I make it for a person that doesn't understand anything and just wants to move it around, okay, there's damage cube. It's a static mesh, so I can either choose static or skeletal, but static is what I need. And I'll import my TGAs in here. Uh, the color map, I'm going to go in here and say create a material. And for the other one, That'll take a second. And for the other one, the normal map, I'm going to drop this down to normal map. and create material. That way, uh, that one's already kind of mounted into place, not on the normal map channel, but it's just there. Okay, I'll double click the material. And there's my diffuse channel, it's already in there. And 
looked like it made two. That'll work. So here's my texture material. I type in texture sample over here. That way I get to this area. Texture sample. Click and drag. So there's my normal map. And my normal map just gets hooked to here. My texture gets hooked to here. Go like this. Pull that to the side for a second. Double click my mesh. So I was wrong. <laughs> it's sideways. <laughs> so uh, remember, I put, I put a disclaimer out there. There we go. So it's at default for future reference. Okay, now I do is have to grab my material for this thing, which is my color map right there, and go into the level of details material properties and just add it to it. I don't want it blue, but it's just um, it's being highlighted right now. So I'm just going to close this out real quick and go back into it. There it goes. Ooh, not bad. Very sweet. Wow, very cool. Okay, so now uh, some collision. And that's just a 6D collision. Just like that. I don't think you want to stand on top of it with those screws sticking out. Close that out. Here's my in-game. So I'm just going to add the damage cube. Scale it up some. And we'll get a preview of it. there it is in game build my lighting and I'm going to put it on production whenever I record <laughs> in game it actually makes the file size like oh so huge I don't know what that deal is I think it's because it ups the frames per second that I have to capture at via automatic on Camtasia so I'm gonna leave it at the light mass variation of this and um, we'll look at that that's gonna be the in-game variation rather than jump in and with the gun or anything else So the light mass is going to take and just make this physically adapted to the world with the color variation from the sky and everything. Cool. So not much change, but wow, look at that detail. Good stuff. So an effective experiment at best enjoy that's how to get it in game from blender